All right, I got uh, all this stuff cleaned up here yesterday. I didn't get a chance to work on it, but I got it all cleaned up. So everything's going to the clean tank and nice and clean. All ready for assembly, but we still have to check our valve spring clearancing for coil bind up under here. Valve seal clearance and stuff like that. And then I get the rock arms all cleaned up. They're ready to assemble up also. So what I want to do is I want to check for a high lift cam. This being a 525 lift on a shovel head means you're 100 thou more than a regular cam. So I need to get the check to make sure this tip stays on the end of the valve here, down here, as it strokes. And if not, we regrind this to make it match up. So I'll have to mock this up on here, and then I got to put the mock up the heads a little bit. And then we'll have to, uh, there's a couple different ways of doing it. You can put light checking springs in here and just work the rock arms. You can um, and just swipe it back and forth. That's quicker and easier. The other way is you put a, put the valve spring in there. You like just throw the middle spring in there, the little thin one. And then uh, mock it up with that, put the box on it, put this on top of the motor and then stroke it through with the cam and everything. So that'll be a real world check. And you put a fill tip up on here or, or something, some kind of marking pin, and run it through. And it'll leave a mark on the valve, leave a mark on the rock arm. I'm more concerned about the rock arm and the valve. And you'll see uh, the contact patch. And then you take it back apart. And when you take it apart, you'll see all the marks. And you make a change if needed. And then you put it back together again and check it again. So there's two different ways of doing things. So. I'm going to do it the uh, off the, not putting the whole motor together this time. So I'll just go ahead and get those cleaned up and check it out this way. I have to get the boxes put together, but I'm not going to put them together for a reel. Which means they'll be coming back apart again. So that'd be called a mock-up. So that just means just put them together. I took the uh, spacers here and I ground them flat. On one side, see this side here is pretty uneven. This one here, you can see how it's ground, weird, screwy stock. This side's good. You need at least one side that's good. The side that goes against the rocker, I mean, want flat. The side that goes against the, the rocker box, it can be uneven. It has to be flat, but it can be uneven. So, just figure out which ones you're going to use and use them. Now, if you want to shim your rocker arms for in play, the easiest way to check that is to take it right now. Take the good side you're going to use, stick it on the rock arm right here, and check your end play right there like that. That there is not too bad of a clearance actually. These all have a little bit, not too awful much. There you can see it. The owner was all concerned about uh, having a lot of in play in these things, but in the real world, this is plenty. It's good. If you put shims in there, all they seem to do is chew them up anyway, so. When you look at these, you gotta look at the chamfer in here. This one's flush. This one here has a little wear mark in it, so if you put it against this way, it'll be slightly tighter than if you do it this way. So we'll check it the loose way first. See, it has lots of in-play. Flip around, check it the other play. And it's usually slightly less. This is our loosest one. Now you can shim this up, or you can cut the shaft down right here just a little bit and tighten it up that way. I don't like doing it that way, so you can also take this and kind of bore a little groove in that and do the same thing. It eliminates clearances. So this one here has a little bit more clearance than the other ones. How much is that? It ain't much. So we'll go over and get a couple of shims. He wants it nice and snug, so Let's see what we got to work with here. Some rocker arm shims. by Eastern.
This is a 5,000 shim. It's a tennis one. Now, if you put the shim right here, when you assemble a rocker arm, if you don't get it on top of that shoulder just right, it'll, it'll sit down. When you tighten it up, it'll still be loose, or it'll take a little shear the wash and jam up the rocker and lock it up. So you never want to put the shims on this side because it's free to float up and down on here. What you really want to do is take the whole thing out of the box, quit being lazy, like this. Put the shim all the way on top of the shaft so it can't drop down. It goes all the way against the shoulder. That way. And put it back together. And then you check it. Now it makes the same noise as the other ones. Slightly looser, slightly tighter. It's your choice. So I like them looser. That's a good clearance there. That's only about five thousand play anyway. But so that's how you do those. This one here is a little bit more now, so it makes a lot more noise than the other one. So he won't be happy. See now these all sound loose there. That's probably when you tighten up one. You're gonna want them all to be like this. Probably when you run them real tight, you can you have a chance of losing stuff. So you only put a one thou five thou shim in there, but it took up a lot of clearance. On the floor. Good place for it. Shim out. See that sounds really, really loose. Real world, it's only about eight thousandths at most. So, do what you want on these things. I prefer just leave them loose with no washers. Now if you try a five thou on this one, see what happens. Now when you tighten these up, they're going to get tighter because you compress the shaft into the spacer and they get tighter, believe me. So this one here, you can see I'd run almost at zero if you had five on there, which is where he wants it to be. So, I don't like them that loose, but he got tight, but We know what the customer is going to want to do. He's going to want to make it tight. Let's have some sevens. Maybe these are sevens. No, these are fives. Here's the sevens. This one's a seven tile shim here. This is the one that felt a little looser. Take two more thou out of it, see what it sounds like. Yeah, I've got no clearance. Too tight. Five thou shim. Now what you never want to do is use those stupid spring-loaded ones they make. Ramjet used to make them in the old days. I don't know who makes them now, but you have a wave washer that goes in here, and you put a spacer over here to make room for the wave washer, and it puts a zero in play because it has a, wash, a spring in there. But what happens is the spring shatters, breaks, goes down the oil drain hole, gets down on the cylinder, and scrapes up the piston, and it goes in the flywheel. It gets chewed up some more, goes over in the breather, chews up the breather case. Then it goes into the cam chest, it blows around top of the cam lift, which causes damage there. Then it drops in the oil pump and takes out the oil pump. I'd recommend you don't use those. I've seen a lot of those fail. Just about every one I take out of the bike, there's at least one broken one, if not all of them. Five thousand shim on all of these. It's up 
this one. We have no end player. Lock solid. This one's not getting one. Now, if I want to give us some end play, I'll have to shorten. I'll have to go grind the arm off a little bit to gain some clearance. I don't have enough. So this clearance here is less than five. Which means these here are almost at zero. And they will probably be at zero when I tighten them down. Which be the next problem we're gonna have. That one should be okay. That's gonna be at zero too. Yeah. They're probably going to lock up on me. A couple of those I think I might get close enough to lock up. We'll find out. Customer thinks he wants it tight. I don't like it that way. I'll leave mine loose. Looser the better. Loose doesn't stick. Doesn't break. Tight does. I don't think it makes noise either, having an play. It's the bushings are what makes the noise. Okay, we're going to go ahead and assemble these up and see what happens. So you got to figure out which pair goes in which box. It doesn't really matter. Where do you put them? these in there dead dry. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little assembly lube on them here. Not a lot, just enough to wet it a little bit. Okay, you got to put the arm in the box first. Wiggle around until it goes in. If you have to force it, you're doing something wrong. You take your spacer, drop it into the box. Then you put the shaft in it. If you have a tight box, you have to beat this in. Now right now I put it in that far. I stop because I hit the bushing on this side. Wiggle around until the arm drops up and goes in. Then you push the rest away. If you have to tap on it, just be careful you don't have to go too much. These are coming back out, so that's why I'm not going to move them up too hard. Just lightly. Pull the arm with your finger and give it a light tap. Okay, flip it around, get the hardware. So use the cap style nut here. Just not using the stock ones with the red dots on the end of them. Red caps that fall off. These ones are a lot better, they don't fall off. For some reason I only see two, there's a third one. Now, there should be little thin washers, here you go. These are ceiling washers, so you gotta use them. Excuse me. It's best to use them anyway. There's three. And there's the fourth one. Now you can flip these over and put them in the other way or just keep putting them in the same way. I'm going to put them the same way this time. For the last time I'll flip it over and then put it in the upside down. That'll give it a better ceiling area. Now the washer helps keep the aluminum from compressing and locking up the shaft to make it tight. So 
It does have a function besides just sealing. After you do that, you check to see what kind of cleaners you got. This one has not much, only a thou or two, but it does rotate. It falls on its own, which is good. This one over here. Here's the clearance. So it's free. This one over here is a lot tighter. I can't really feel any clearance in it. Which means it's basically at one. Now one thou does not leave any room for expansion, contraction. It could lock up when this thing heats up or it could work fine. You don't know which way it's going to go. So it's too damn tight. It does move though. So it's not tight right this minute. but. There it gets tight. See, it doesn't just quite drop away. See, it's not quite dropping. It should drop. So you got oil on it, but see, it does drop. This one doesn't. So this one here is too tight. Shaft won't come out. Yeah, hold up the shaft, I guess. I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, that's too tight, so we're taking that one out. Now we got in play. So don't want to drop. Hmm. The bushing's a little bit tight on this one, I think. It has in play. It should drop. But there's no binding. Not even feel anyway. Alright, so that one's gonna be only one I'm gonna get a washer. And these ones here, I'm sure, are going to be the same problem. They're going to be too tight. But we'll waste time. The customer wants to waste time. He likes it when I waste my time. So I'll just leave them all loose and it won't be a problem. Because they aren't really that loose. This one doesn't want to go in. So you try to jam these things in there. Sometimes they just don't like going. So this is one of them. There you go. Put it in that direction. If it one way, try it a different way. The key is don't beat on it to make it go.
Yeah, oil on there. Can't feel anything. Can hear a click somewhere, but there's no input in that thing. This one here. Same thing, you only got a dial or so in now. Dial to half. So right now these are working, but like I said, once it warms up, it might get tighter, it might get looser, it might not change. Too damn tight. Let's see, we got the 5000s in here, they're not even just as thin as we can go. So once again, no shims. So you have to grind a rock arm thinner to get clearance if you want to run a shim in there. Or you run it the way it is, it might work, it might not. More likely it'll clearance itself. It'll grind the shim all up. It'll make the clearance it wants. Believe me, it will. And then uh, you'll have all that metal inside your motor that you don't need. Great. Both shims stuck. The rocker on. The spacer has to come out to get the rock arm out. Wiggle it around until it pops out. Pull it out, and then you get the arm out. There's the shim. Shim go. Where did the shim run off to? We got a shim in there. Somewhere. No, there's no shim. Shim run off to. I don't see the shim, but it's tight. Where the hell's the shim at? It's not there. So this one's just tight on its own. So this arm is just plain tight. Wonderful. But I shimmed every one of them though. I could have swore I put shims on all this stuff. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm getting tired, I guess. See what no sleep does for you? It makes you all stupid. So before we had clearance on everything, now we got no clearance. All I do is put oil on it. Hmm. Wonderful. I wonder how that worked. I 
Well, we need more clearance. And I don't, the shelves are individually fitted, but maybe we can gain a little bit. Get the shelf to let me mix it. the same. A little snug. That one's got in play. This one has barely any in play. So I'm going to have to grind this rock arm a little shorter. Just too damn tight. Alright, we'll have to deal with that. Drop everything on the floor again. So we'll have to deal with some tight parts. I swore I put a shim in there, but there appears to be no shim. And it definitely does not need one, that's for sure. Alright, so we used one shim is all we used. Okay. I'm going to mark this one here with a... Remind me to... Grind it a little bit. Need some in play. Alright, so the boxes are more or less ready for mock up for what we need to do. Fun deal, huh? 